Hello, this is uh, Jeffrey Fox again, and we're going to do the third unit in this section on e-commerce and lifestyle informatics, uh, covering recommender systems and related technologies, um, to just cover all the different types of things which uh, use similar ideas to guide and persuade and people to do things in uh, buying buying items, getting jobs, and so on. Uh, we are, of course, using clouds. We're running recommender systems collaboratively. We're processing big data, and we're solving problems in lifestyle informatics with our usual collage. Uh, in this uh, part of, the, um, of this unit, we discussed item-based collaborative filtering. Um, remember, in the previous unit, we discussed user-based collaborative filtering. There was also content-based um, approaches to recommend the systems. We will do not discuss, those are done in a much more straightforward fashion, and we will not um, discuss those here. So if we look at um, user-based versus um, item-based, there was some issue as to, just in terms of compute time, as to how much effort it takes to do this. When a user, when in the user-based approach, one of the difficulties is uh, you have to do this uh, in real time to actually be interesting, and um, you will find the, that effort is quite high. Uh, these methods all have to be done in memory, so they're real-time methods, and you need to find the neighbors and make prediction. And for a large um, commerce site, this just doesn't scale properly. And you have tens of millions of customers and millions of items. And so you have many more users than items. And so the user-based approach, finding users near a given user, is a computationally particularly intense idea. The model-based approaches include several ideas, including clustering, but also item-based collaborative filtering. And here you save some of that compute time by doing things offline. And you can find out which items are near each other independent of the user. So you can actually store that information. So that when along comes Alice, and you know Alice, um, say, has purchased uh, a particular item, you know which items are near that uh, item because you've already can ca have calculated that. So that's an idea behind these model-based approaches. You take a method that allows you to do some things offline. Clustering is extremely similar to the collaborative filtering idea. You take the set of items and divide them into groups, so-called clusters. They're not actually distinct, They're, they actually sort of touch each other, but they're regions of this um, vector space of, um, of items, which are just um, where any, any item in that cluster is almost by definition near the other items. And so you can say things in the same cluster are likely to be li have similar similarities to, to, uh, for a given user. So if, so if Alice likes an item in a cluster, she might like other items in that cluster. So let's give an example coming from this wonderful book, recommenderbook.net, on item-based collaborative filtering. So we have here our friend uh, Alice, and um, she has purchased, as usual, um, items one through four. And uh, we want to know, we want to find out. We actually want to look at all other items. Remember, items are the relative number of items, relatively small number, even if there is a long tail. We want to look at all other items and see which ones are near uh, near the one she likes, or at least near the one she's rated highly. Maybe she has, you know, she's not so keen on item two. Uh, and of course, user four hates item one. But we're not, user four is only, these users are only here, uh, not because we're going to find users near Alice, we're going to find items which are near, uh, we're going to find uh, we're going to look at item five and find out if it's, it has, based on its rankings here, here we have the rankings of item five. We want to know whether these rankings can suggest that item five is near one of the items that Alice has purchased. And then we might want to recommend it to Alice. So, 
In this case here, it's gonna be turn out to be items one and four are the ones that are relatively similar to item five, based on these rankings. So we're gonna use a, a, a method which is pretty similar to the, to the Pearson correlation. We're going to, but we're now summing over totally in a totally different, you know, if we think of it as a matrix of item versus users, we're summing in the opposite direction in the matrix, horizontally instead of vertically. And um, we're gonna sum here over, over, over users here, we have the users. And we're gonna sum over users who've ranked both A and B. So we're trying to find the similarity between two items, A and B. We sum over the users who've ranked both A and B. You have, and so we have a ranking from this, from a user for A and a ranking from a user for B. We take the same effectively uh, scalar product divided by the length of the vector. And again, the only reason why this is not a normal formula and a normal cosine is that you only sum over the users who have, who have um, rated both A and B. And so it's, a, it's not a um, true cosine. Because normally, true cosine, you have to sum over all users. But you can't do that because you only know the rankings for some of the users. And you, when, when, you know, it's a little frustrating, um, maybe a, a user has um, ranked A very highly, but hasn't ranked B, so you can't use that user. We only can look at users who've ranked A and B. And remember, we're doing this offline, because uh, all this data sitting in, sitting on our disks, uh, running in HBase and HDFS and things like that. And we're going to fetch this information and do this calculation to find the similarity. And which, and then we're going to take each, if we look at this, one of, I mean, A is going to be item one through item four, and B is going to be item five in the previous slide. So given these similarities, we're only going to keep um, items that, um, here we have an item P, which is going to be item um, five. And we're going to look at the items which uh, which Alex has rated, Alex has writing. So I runs over items one to four. We have the rating of U is Alice, U for items one through four. I runs over one through four in this uh, simple example, or generally it runs over all um, items that Alice has, Alice has ranked. We weight with the similarity and divide by the sum of the similarities. And of course, we only sum over uh, those items which we know have a high similarity. We also explained in the previous um, uh, unit how you might actually try to enhance those similarities near one by, well, I gave a, ra a random example of raising similarity to the fourth power. It can be the eighth power or the second power or the 1.1 power, but all of that will enhance the um, items that are um, near um, near the one we're trying to predict. And um, typically when you're in a big system, you really probably have a lot of items, a lot of items actually near a given item. And so you just choose a, a locality um, domain. And so you just choose from 20 to 50 neighbors came from this 2002 paper. You, as I've mentioned, this field is a little frustrating. A lot of the references are very old, because people have not, originally this all started off academically, and there were lots of nice studies, but then it moved off into industry. And as this is a proprietary, incredibly value to know how to do this exactly, that those um, industry will not tell you the value of K. They will not tell you what, how they enhance nearby similarities and things like that, that's all. That's all the secret sauce that uh, just like the formula for Coca-Cola, that secret sauce is what uh, makes that company succeed. And so here we have a basic summary of item-based collaborative filtering. You pre-compute all the calculable item-item similarities. And maybe you make a cut that only items which have a certain number of users in common can you calculate it? If uh, two items only have three users in common, that may not be enough to make a reliable uh, prediction. 
Then you take a long comes a user. She logs in, and um, you know immediately what she's purchased or ranked in the past. And then you secretly, while she's uh, drinking your coffee and deciding what to do, you immediately run your algorithm because you know she'll want to have some predictions. And you find the um, Kate nearest neighbor based on the item item similarities of each of Alice's items. So you actually have K um, neighbors, K times NA uh, uh, items from this. You remove from that K times NA items duplicates, ones that aren't actually available, already purchased by Alice, already or so. And then you take this prune list of items and order it using that prediction function we had on the previous slide. And so that's what you return. And that's the so called that, that's what Amazon gives you when you search by relevance. Or when, when not, that's not just Alice. Amazon. When you search by relevance, you get something searched by this prediction, by this uh, predicted ranking function.